right, here's the finished painting. We, we're going to start right out from the beginning of the video with this painting. You can actually uh, zoom in and uh, do a screen capture. However you want to uh, use your own uh, electronic devices and um, cameras, whatever you have to paint with it. I think you should paint from this finished painting. I think that, that's better. So I'll zoom in here and just leave it on for a few minutes. You can be creative with the way you're going to capture this. You can hit pause and draw and paint from this. Or you can pause throughout the video um, during the pencil drawing and, and then eventually the painting. Okay, so we're back, and uh, we just showed the finished painting, actually, of our uh, beautiful flowers we have, colorful flowers, and it's uh, maybe a scene in uh, our kitchen or our sunroom, and uh, we're having a great time. Maybe we're uh, making some lunch, some breakfast, some dinner. Um, kitchens and, and uh, sunrooms, anything by windows are beautiful. You get natural light, so that's where we're kind of going to have this idea of natural light with our flower arrangement, and you did see the finished painting, so um, you can pretty much, uh, anyone that's been on my channel for a while, you know <laughs> I am not great with uh, all the electronic gadgets and everything like that. A lot of times uh, my, uh, my, my YouTube videos are a little more primitive than probably many that you see out there, but in any case, uh, we're still having fun, we're still enjoying ourselves, and we're here to learn to paint, not so much make a, a perfect video. And uh, so, We'll, we'll get right started here. Again, you saw the finished painting, so you can use that. You know, you can pause the video on your uh, electronic device, whether, you know, if you have like a pad or a phone or a laptop or a desktop computer, anything like that. You can just hit pause and draw from that and even paint from that for that, you know, paint from it as well. And I find that that's the best way to really uh, get a real good... Um, uh, a good hold of watercolor is to paint from finished watercolor paintings. I know sometimes it is fun to paint from a picture, a photograph of something that's, you know, a photo of a place or a photo of a, a structure or uh, a photo of somebody if you're going to do a portrait, whatever. It, it's fun. I would say, you know, mix it up. Try to paint from pictures, some from photographs, uh, you know, realism. But it's really a great thing, and, and you learn a lot more about how to use paint colors and washes when you paint from actual watercolor paintings. And then you just find what paintings you want to paint. You look at them and you say, yeah, I can tackle that. My skill level is good. I can do it. If you see something really tough and you might not be up for it, you just you take something easier and you do that. So the thing is with watercolors, try to, try to paint and draw, draw and paint uh, to your skill level. So don't try to go too crazy and do something too complex because that ends up in frustration. I know myself when I first started I was trying to tackle all these really difficult uh, watercolor paintings and I just didn't have the talent or the time in. You know I didn't I hadn't practiced enough yet to be able to, to work on very challenging and difficult watercolor paintings. So the thing is if we can stick to smaller maybe compositions and more easier uh, compositions in the beginning, learn the fundamentals, then we can move on to more complex scenes, if that makes sense. So paint within your skill level. You know, if you're already advanced as a watercolor artist, then go for it. Try, you know, try doing as many difficult paintings as you can and different artists, you know, try different techniques and all that. But if you're just starting out or, you're, you know, maybe you just, you don't have a lot of time to put into watercolor, but you still are, have been painting for a while, then you just go for it. Stick within your skill level with what you feel is comfortable, and you always try to push ahead and do a little something more difficult the next time. Or, you know, after a while, you kind of say, oh, I've got this. Now I'm going to go on and do something else. So if that all makes sense, I hope it does. If you've been following me for some time now, many of you have, um, you kind of know that I'm always trying to encourage you all. You're the artists. Kind of know your goals. Know what you have to do. You have to learn your colors and the fundamentals and tonal values and composition and things like that. Learn, learn as much as you can as you go, but always try to do a little more, do a little more 
challenging things. So you keep pushing yourself onward to, um, you know, uh, learn and grow because you learn and grow when you're doing things that are more difficult. If you kind of just stick with the same uh, routine or the same type of painting all the time, then you're not really going to learn a lot more about uh, watercolor. So let's get started here. Um, let's just uh, maybe we'll do. A Well, we're, you already know what the painting looks like, so I'm just going to do a coffee cup here. And I'm just contour drawing. Yeah, a coffee cup here and some shadow. And we got a bowl over here. A lemon in there, maybe. And you just try to, as you contour draw, you can draw through things lightly. So if you know you want to get an angle behind my, this coffee cup here, you can get that angle and that, uh, that line by just lightening up on your pencil. You just lift up on your pencil a little bit and you just make a light line so that you can kind of get the feel of that. And then you can pick it back up over here, similar to that. So that's like drawing through. That's kind of like a technique called drawing through. As you uh, draw, when you're contour drawing, you draw through something, but you let up on the pencil a little bit and just go light. And then you can come back and just lift up the pencil mark on the mug, coffee cup. And then you still have your line going all the way across and you're picking up your bowl on the other side of the, the coffee mug, uh, mug, if that makes sense. So now here we're going to do our... Our vase. And we're just going to do a little vase here. A little shadowing under that there. And then maybe we'll do another. We'll do an apple. Maybe over here. Now that's if this is going to be an apple, and let's say I'm just drawing this, uh, drawing this contour drawing, uh, you know, just creating it out of my mind, well then I would say this is a really small vase compared to this coffee mug. So already I can see, let's just, so you can draw like this, you can draw and make up your own subject matter. Let's just erase that a little bit, and we'll just make our flower vase a little bigger like that that's better and then here since we're gonna draw an apple the apple would be quite a bit bigger it would probably be about the size of a small co coffee cup there coffee mug so we're gonna do that we'll do our we'll do an apple a little shadow under there So here we have some good, a uh, few things here, some nice subject matter, and we'll start with our flowers. At this point you can take a break if you feel like you've drawn for a little while and you're, you're starting to uh, lose a little concentration, no big deal, take a break, come back in, continue drawing. We'll keep moving along here, we're just doing the contour drawing. So you can see what I did though. As I was drawing, I kind of noticed I made my vase too small compared to my scale of my coffee mug and maybe a bowl back here and there's some other couple lemons and maybe an apple in here. So, um, and another apple over here maybe, or a tomato. So you can put different things in your, as you're creating something, you can just make up your own ideas as you go. You could use something as reference. So I might be using another picture as a reference picture, but then I can change it around and kind of customize it to the way I want it to look, you know, so you can do that too. And uh, we'll start out here, we'll do some... And we're going to do a nice beautiful red flower here. And...
And another maybe flower here. And then some leaves and uh, stems just for a little interesting uh, look. There we got uh, and maybe something over here, another leaf or some interesting colors, you know, shapes and things. Okay, that's good. Now, like I said, we're, we're going to pretend here we're maybe in a kitchen, a sunroom. You know, the thing is that we're, we're near a window with backlighting, so the light's coming from behind us. Let's maybe make a little insignia up here. Backlighting we can put like this. So you can draw in your, um, you can so sort of memorize your, your own symbols. So this would be backlighting for me, where I'm seeing almost like one of those spotlights. So I can kind of see that the spotlight is in front of me shining this way. So that that can I'd consider that backlighting. So I can make that little insignia at the top of my painting. Backlighting. And uh, we can we'll make a, maybe an interesting uh, we'll make a window sill here maybe. We'll draw through lightly. Lift up on the pencil as we go across the vase, and then get a little darker. And uh, we'll do another line here for the light. That will be the light. And then we'll make a few uh, windows here, panes. We'll make some panes of glass here. Just going to sort of make um, indications of that. I don't want to get too fancy. Um, just indications of window panes, but I do want to keep them looking uh, natural, like uh, spaced evenly. So here we have the uh, bottom of the windows are going to be thicker. The bottom sash of the window is going to be thicker at the bottom. And then the grills of the window are thinner. So I just want to make sure I get that idea. Thinner on the grills here of the window. And then down here, the uh, sash is a little bit thicker. And that looks pretty good. So we have the idea of some windows back here. And we're not going to make that the focus of the painting. It's the flowers and the apple and a coffee cup and some other interesting things here. Maybe we'll make a maybe a paintbrush here. So we have an artist brush here. Maybe we're, we're painting our still life painting here and we just had a brush here and we decided to put that into the painting. There we go. One of our round brushes maybe. And the hairs of the brush here and that's all. All right, our, our drawing is pretty much done here. I think we have everything pretty much enough information with our pencil drawing that now we can just start going in and doing our painting. And again, and a good idea is if you like that loose feel to your paintings, you just remember you're kind of underdoing everything all the time. You're not quite getting so focused in on getting every detail. You're just sort of getting the general idea of things when you're doing your work. Um, some of you might like to paint more really, you know, more realistic. You can go for that. Look, that's fine too. All I'm saying is kind of take notice of your style of your painting and what you're actually doing. Are you really getting every detail or are you kind of letting things just be free and flowing, you know, free flowing, you know, you're kind of interested in the colors and the water and the washes, and you're not so, you know, having to be accurate on every pencil line and every color, you know, have fun with it. Um, loosen up a little bit, just again, 
best time to learn about your style is by just practicing fun little compositions like this and not like we're sitting down and trying to do a, a masterful painting. We're just having fun. We're trying these small compositions. Join along with me here. And again, if you haven't uh, subscribed, please subscribe. Come on by. We have videos every week. We create new videos, new ideas. We have all kinds of interesting subject matter, seascapes, boats, landscapes. We do um, flower videos. You know, we're doing flowers now. We do flowers all the time. We do, um, sometimes we'll do figures, streetscapes. We do different techniques, different styles. Um, so come on by, hit that subscribe button. Also, uh, you know, hit the um, notification bell next to the subscribe button. This way you know when the video comes out. This way you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about thinking about when is the video coming out. You'll know. It'll alert you right away when the video comes out. And then this way you can check it out and see if that's something you want to grab your gear, your brushes, your paints, your palette, and, and do some work uh, uh, the next time when you're uh, sitting down to paint. Okay? All right. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back and we're going to start painting and we have um, a uh, just a round brush here. This is a, a Da Vinci um, Kalinsky round brush. It's a travel brush. It's really uh, nice uh, and lightweight. Good point um, for this painting here. I think we can use this. Um, we could go with a larger brush, but we'll stick with this and see how this uh, works as we uh, start our painting here. Fresh, clean water. And uh, we're, we're ready to go. So um, let's go with some... Now here the thing is, let's just have fun. Um, we're going to get some cadmium red, some alizarin crimson. And um, we'll start out with that. Maybe a little bit of purple. Ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton, my favorite purple. And uh, let's uh, let's recall that we're we're just having fun and placing some paint on the paper and some water. I use a tissue and uh, take some water off the brush so that I can get that pure color. going in just getting pure cadmium red right out of the tube. Maybe we'll add a little orange too to our um, color mixture. So getting some really exciting color variation here right in the palette. And I will then Dampen the brush with some water and then do a little more lighter. So here I'm not adding any water, I'm just rinsing the brush off and leaving the brush damp. And this way we can get some of them lighter tones, tonal values there. And then we can go back in and get our So we're just mixing around. Sometimes we're using straight paint with a dry brush, drying off the water. Other times we're going in, picking up a, pick, rinsing our brush off and just using a damp brush to add water to our mixture, keeping it lighter. So we're just always trying to control the water in the paint, the amount of moisture in the brush. And that's the beauty of using a smaller brush with a good point, is you can actually uh, you can take your time going through the, 
through the painting and you you have a little more flexibility with how if you have a really large brush as you're going through here you might kind of lose some of those finer details I'm gonna leave some white of paper in here too I'll use some French ultramarine blue cobalt blue maybe a little Prussian blue and we'll do a little cobalt blue maybe And I'll do a little splashing here. Just a couple splashes, maybe loosen up a little bit here. Okay. And let's start. Let's work in a couple greens. We got olive green, sap green, cerulean blue. We'll add some cerulean blue here. Maybe a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon yellow. Okay, a nice variety of greens and some lemon yellow. And that little bit of blue, cerulean blue, mixed with green. And then now we're just going to have some fun and make some leaf shapes. We could add a little bit of burnt sienna two burnt umber burnt sienna up here just to add that little variation in color again looks good variation is nice it works it works and All right. Now we can stick with our our green mixes here just so we have a nice little bit of blue. Then we change it up olive green there we go and then you can uh, if you see something that you might have went heavy with a line or something you can lift up if you can Sometimes you'll paint something and then you realize you went too heavy with a line, let's say, for these here. I should have maybe used my um, needlepoint brush, but I just uh, was getting uh, over uh, zealous here and trying to get some more paint on here. And, but that still is okay. We can... We can just adjust things and say, okay, this is a larger leaf. That. And let's go in and get some purple. We're going to go and do some purple and red and blue. Let's do some light looking purple flowers here so we will splash a little and as you can see I 
I'm just having a fun time here and not worrying to and splashing. I'm not worrying too much about every detail. I'm just trying to get the idea of colors, shapes, uh, you know, approximate shapes, right? Like flowers we know or the petals we're used to seeing. The, so if you're just keeping that idea of the shapes of the petals being somewhat close and then you, you're fine. And there we go. Damp brush to get the um, the lighter tonal values. You just lighten up with a damp brush. Pick up some color, lighter. See how we're using lighter tonal values now. We're using more water, less straight paint. We're using more water in our paint mixture. And then we can always go in and add some more. We can grab some straight ultramarine violet and then add some in to make it look more interesting. Straight out of the tube color like that. Maybe a little bit of red in there too. We're going to come back here in a, in a little while. Let's go with just a little bit of a larger brush. I'm going to use a number eight Raphael brush, round brush, Kalinsky Sable round brush. I'm going to get now. Here's a good point where I'm going to just change out my water. Um, okay, I have to. Uh, I have to um, replenish my water supply, so look, this is a good time for a break. Um, we've got some good, beautiful color on here. As you can see, I'm going to just darken up a few spots with some purple. And if a splash you don't like the splash, you just add a little bit of a uh, damp brush to it. We're going to paint this background into with the uh, the window. Okay, let's take a break. Perfect time for a break. I'm going to get some uh, fresh water from my uh, water bucket, and we'll come back and we'll continue on. And uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Interesting videos every week here at our YouTube channel. All right, we're back and we're going to get some fresh water in our our water bucket here. Okay, so now with this part of the painting, we're going to want to have uh, fresh, clean water because we're going to do some really light washes of paint, water and paint. So um, it's always good if you're going to if you're working on sections of your painting that have very rich, uh, thick 
juicy paint in there like we did through here, you know, if your water gets a little muddy, that's not a big deal because, you know, you're not going to see it when you're mixing uh, high intensity colors like this through here. But if we're going to go with some lighter washes to do some lighter tonal values on our painting for shadows and things, that's when you would start to see the muddy kind of colors, all the mixtures. It might not always look so great. So you have to actually um, kind of work with that, see what you like in your paintings. Maybe a couple times you do some compositions like this and you, you leave the border the way it is and you don't change out your water. Then maybe you do another painting, another couple paintings after that, and you change your water frequently and you see how the, uh, what happens when you change out your water more frequently. And you'll, see, you'll maybe see a, a slight change or maybe more of a dramatic change too, it depends. Uh, when I first started painting, I didn't change my water as frequently. Then I started um, changing my water, you know, at, uh, you know, periodic uh, intervals as I was painting, taking breaks, going back, starting to paint, take a break, change the water. So I kind of just got into the habit. Each time I take a break, I change the water in my water bucket and, and it works out great. But um, you have to try it out on your paintings. Maybe you like more of a... Um, different mixtures of colors, that's fine too. So you have to just kind of see what you like uh, in your painting and, and try different ideas. It's always good. Be creative. You're the artist. Be creative. Try different techniques. Try different ideas with what you do. And uh, you don't have to follow one person's advice. You just you take all advice in con into consideration and then you just keep working forward and try all the different things you're learning out and you see which ones you like to keep and some you're not going to maybe use anymore. You let those go by the wayside and, you know, you just keep going. All right, so we're going to get back into it here and let's uh, try out some of those um, lighter washes. So let's do some purple and cerulean blue and maybe we'll do a little light wash here and we'll just start working some light washes in. Like that, maybe a little lizard and crimson. Maybe some raw sienna here. And we have, there we have it. I'll add a little darker cerulean blue here, just so that we kind of have a little darker uh, tonal value there. And I'll always try to Keep adding colors around the painting as I use them. Okay, I'm thinking bright light here. Burnt umber. Maybe some wood tone here. So we're going to do some wood tone for the windows just a little bit. Maybe what we do is we pretend we're trying to make things look like the light is bouncing around in the kitchen in, in the kitchen here along the countertop and through the windows the light is bouncing around. So some areas are going to be darker, little pops of color, and then other times it's going to be very light. Use a little bit of the Prussian blue here. And a little more of the raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And we just work around the colors. So you can see I'm just working the colors around, picking up different colors as I go. 
we know we're going to use this uh, raw umber, burnt umber, raw sienna, the browns, the the tonal, uh, the um, earth colors. We know we're going to use those for the window. We'll, pre we'll pretend it's a, a wood windows, so it's a those classic beautiful wood windows. Maybe they're not painted, they're just, they have a nice, uh, shellac finish on them. We'll leave some light there. We'll go under here, burnt umber. So that's burnt umber and uh, Prussian blue. We get a little purple as well. Always using the repeating colors of what we've been using so far. And then we just add uh, straight water onto this here to just bring this wash down. Raw sienna or yellow ochre. Mix it around. I'm going to use some lemon, cadmium lemon yellow. So as I'm doing that, right away I say to myself, all right, I'm going to use some cadmium lemon yellow for the lemon. Over here I'm going to make a lemon here, so let me put some of that quick around, fast, around the painting. Nothing worse than one color sitting on a watercolor paper when there's no other similar or exact same color on that canvas or the watercolor paper. <clears throat> it could look good too, I don't know, I haven't experimented tremendously with that, but... Okay, so that we have... Okay, looking good. Okay, now let's start on our um, good time for straight alizarin crimson, rose matter. Let's do our delicious apple here. And again, the light's coming from the back background, so you could, um, if you let's say you're, the light's coming from behind, you can take if you've painted over something, you can just like that, lift up a little paint with some tissue or paper towel, and that's that will remedy that. And then I'll some purple here at the bottom. Cobalt blue, purple. I'll get some raw sienna. Okay, that's a little bit of shadowing. problem if you've painted next to a, a wet area no big deal you just take a tissue or a paper towel and you lift up and we'll come back and continue working on those when we're uh, when the paper dries a little we have a little um, shadowing issue here I think I might have added the shadow a little more 
to the side versus, um, but that's okay, we'll work with it. And okay, so now we're working in our shadows. This will be a white coffee cup and a white vase. So we'll I'm keeping an eye over here on this and Okay, now Do some reflected light by lifting up a little bit of paint. And uh, we're going to continue here. Let's do purple. We'll get some shadow on here. Pick up a little bit of red from the apple on there. Purple. I'll add a little bit of red and orange here. Blue. I'll do is I'll add a little bit of splashing for the um, maybe where the flowers are um, the shadows for the flowers here that's going to be more purple than warmer colors and I went over my paintbrush a little bit but that's not a problem we will add that paintbrush in last so we're not going to worry about that right now and then the same thing with this here or we have a white so we will do some blue and purple it's nice to do um, a little bit of blue mixed in with the with the purple. And I just keep rinsing my brush. I dry it off a little bit if I need to lighten up on the, the shadows. French ultramarine blue, purple, a little bit of the red maybe. And I think that looks good sometimes, just those little few bits of dark here and there, it doesn't have to be everywhere. And as you can see, I'm really kind of building a um, pattern of like really high intensity colors, lighter washes, high intensity color here, lighter colors here, light here, obviously the window, the light's coming through the window. And if you keep using that idea of here and there, some high intensity colors, and then here and there, some 
lighter washes with, you know, more water, less paint. You kind of have this kind of technique, really. Um, and then sometimes you'll notice as you're working that your really high intensity colors will, will start to disappear because they're, they're actually uh, just like melting into the water on the paper. So you have to keep going back once in a while if you see you need to. Um, you go back and you try to add in some of the high intensity straight paint out of the tube in those locations that you're trying to get that effect as you're painting your painting. And it looks pretty good so far. Let's get that high intensity yellow lemon. We got a lemon over here. Let's do that. So there we go. There's our lemon over here. Okay, our lemon. Maybe we have a green apple. That would be here. Um, lemon yellow and green. And then we just add the cadmium lemon on top here. We leave a light, so I leave a highlight on top there. So we have a, a uh, a lemon on the left here. Then we have a green apple here. And we'll put some shadowing on that bowl here. There we go. So we put a little bit of shadowing on that bowl, a little bit of raw sienna in here. Purple and blue. It's a shadow. And maybe we have another little bit of shadow here on this cup. And that's raw sienna and cerulean blue. Maybe we do that there. If you go over a line, no big deal. Lift it up with a tissue. And then we can... Uh, adjust a little bit let's maybe we'll make some interesting um uh decorative uh, lines on our coffee cup and our bowl and our vase to sort of add more excitement to this so we're gonna let this dry we could still work a little more we can do some more on our our apple here And sometimes we can just we leave a highlight there. That white paper looks good. Then we can take some uh, burnt umber, cerulean blue, and we'll make a little stem here. Looks good. And we'll put a little like that. Again, we're saying let's add some high intensity colors here and there. And if they disappear a little bit, we just add them back in as we go. And I think that's good. Maybe something here. All right, so now you see we've done a lot of the same, same colors over and over. So we keep reusing the same colors in our painting everywhere. And we also made sure that we use some real high intensity color, straight tube paint from our palette, straight tube, no water, just straight out of the, our um, dishes, our, uh, our uh, palette uh, spacers here, you know, we. Straight paint, straight paint, straight paint here, here, and here. Some over here, straight paint. Then we add some water and water, make our, our mixes a little bit more, adding more water, a little less paint. 
and we do our lighter, lighter tonal values through here you can see lighter high intensity lighter high intensity lighter high intensity lighter and if you keep that idea going throughout your painting where you're always adding some high intensity simmering it down a little bit making it lighter you keep doing that throughout your painting and that you have this look then of um, it's almost like a, um, a l effect of light bouncing around and it's lighting up some things in your painting and other things it's sort of the light's not quite strong enough to reduce the intensity of some of the beautiful colors that you have so let's keep with that idea we're going to finish up now we're going to take a quick break we're going to let these areas dry here so we can do our paintbrush and I think once we do that once the paintbrush is complete we can just check around and see if there's anything else we can maybe touch up a little bit and we'll add some uh, lines some decorative lines on our pottery on our coffee cup and coffee mug and our uh, bowl our fruit bowl and our vase so we're going to do some of that which is going to really look really really look beautiful so okay again uh, be right back and uh, we'll start again with some more interesting painting All right, so we're back now and we're uh, actually uh, getting back into our painting here. We're looking to finalize our um, details of our painting. Probably I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, Da Vinci number five uh, travel brush with the uh, finer point here. Um, I also have a um, needlepoint brush, number eight needlepoint brush. I'll use that as well to get some more details on our uh, um, uh, stems here on the on the flower arrangement here, a small, very um, enjoyable flower arrangement. And so we have, again, we've done most of our work and like we said, we're actually just going to um, finish up our final details now. We're gonna finish our paintbrush. We're gonna do a little bit of decorative um, work on our vase, mug, and bowl with some ornamentation. And that, that should really be fine. Um, and again, we, we kind of wanted to stress um, does this make sense? We wanted to stress some really, really exciting, bright, vibrant colors here and there in our painting. And then in other par portions of the painting, we wanted to go with less, with more, you know, uh, lighter washes of color, lighter tonal values. Um, and when we do those lighter washes, that gives us an opportunity to use lots of beautiful color. As you can see here, we use lots of uh, different mixtures of colors, the same repeating colors throughout our painting here. And um, uh, if you need to go back, you just go back and check as we go through the painting. I'll, you know, I'll always be mentioning over and over and over again the colors we're using, so you can jot them down. Maybe it might be helpful if, if you find that uh, um, if you lose track sometimes of the colors we're using, you can jot them down as we go and hit pause. And um, but pretty much we're using the same palette all the time every week over and over so here you can kind of at this channel on uh, my channel here you can pretty much once you have worked with your palette with the same colors I'm using you'll get used to the colors all the time so that you might just be looking at the actual video or a picture of it um, or if you have it on pause you'll just look at it and kind of you can see all you'll be able to see all the colors and identify them without having to really refer back to any lists or anything if you're using the same colors all the time. But if you like to experiment with colors, I understand, and that's fine too. You're the artist. You know, if you want to uh, experiment with colors and, and use a lot of different colors in your art, that's fine too. Um, so let's, let's continue here. So let's do our paintbrush. I really think that using a nice ivory black is going to look good with our our paintbrush and so then here I just go right down the center of the brush like that rinse my brush off and then we'll go with um, maybe a little bit of raw sienna and the black mixed like that and maybe I'll just go and I'll hit and miss a few spots for light, so we have some lights there. And then underneath, some French ultramarine blue. And 
mixed with the black, some French ultramarine blue for a cooler black. I could use some Pines Gray too. I'll do that. I'll get some Pines Gray. Okay, now once this all completely dries, the uh, handle of the brush then will add a light wash of uh, cobalt blue for a shadow with some purple mixed in there, ultramarine violet. But for right now, we're going to just work on the top portions of the brush and then here we're going to do the ferrule, which is the metal part of the brush and we'll, we'll do that there. And again, this is, um, since it's in shadow and you can see all the shadows from above on the table, it's sort of hiding the, the brush a little bit, which is all right. So we'll just make some brown, raw umber. We'll make our brush. And we'll just... Just like that. Maybe a little darker underneath. So we'll mix in some of that darker mixture there. Like that. And that that's fine. It doesn't have to be exact. And again, we'll do a shadow once this dries 100%. So let's move away from this right now, because if we try putting a shadow in there right now, I think it's going to, well, let's try it, see how it is. It looks pretty dry, actually. Let's try it out. A little bit of uh, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple, lighter wash, not extremely, like we wouldn't use straight paint here. We need to water it down. We need to add some water to this. And we'll do this. Like that. That looks good. And we'll go right along there, some more blue, cobalt blue. That's pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now we're going to start getting our, maybe a little bit of French ultramarine blue here. I will try to accentuate this handle of the brush like that subtly so that we can see it better than we did before a little bit of splashing Okay, and I will do the same up here. If you... find that you've gone over a line or something, you can change it. So I'll make a little more of a shadow here. Okay, and uh, let's see here, let's uh, raw umber, cerulean blue, and we just change that tonal value a little bit there and there.
and I'm trying to just trying to just get that cup a little bit better. The mug here, the coffee cup, and a little bit of shadow under the bottom of the handle, and if and a splash. I can do a little quick splashes there just to sort of. And here. Just a little bit of more detail where the shadow is. And some yellow ochre here. For that lemon. Sap green. Cerulean blue. Okay. Just trying to fix up like the uh, shapes here with the mug and the bowl, make it a little more um, defined, but not too. We can add a little bit of white over here if we need to, some titanium white to maybe fix up something here and there. All right, so now let's do our um, ornamentation straight. Straight uh, cerulean blue mixed with a little cobalt, maybe. I would say cobalt blue would look really good. Straight cobalt blue right out of the tube. And then let's just have some fun. Let's make some, we'll just make a little line here with maybe some fun uh, ornamentation there. Doesn't have to be really. Just like that, a couple little sp spots of color, and right away we have um, some ornamentation on it. Doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. And then we can even do another uh, couple spots there. couple little spots of color, uh, some cadmium red. So that's all we do is a little, just like that. Then we can get our uh, needle, needle point brush. And just do a couple quick little Just a couple little quick little movements of the brush to give it that look as if we have spent hours doing details on this. And um, this looks pretty good there. I just might do a couple. Raw umber and blue. Olive green. And this just adds a little extra um, interesting touch.
touch of uh, detail. The uh, needlepoint brush, you, it just really, it makes everything uh, seem to like fit better in the painting, let's say, because now we're adding this extra bit of detail. Like that. So we have all varieties of lines, really super fine lines, medium lines, thick leaves, thicker branches, you know, it kind of gives you that lots of variety. That's what we want here, variety. Makes the painting look really good. Variety of colors, tonal values, exciting, light, shadow. And, uh, and that's what we just make sure we don't go just a few and that's it and we're that's a finished painting maybe I, I just see one spot here we can use a little just that little bit of um, some blue and some purple maybe just to give it some uh, light and shadow over here Lemon there. Okay, that looks good. Now maybe we'll trim off the uh, tape. Okay, so now we uh, remove the tape and then we'll just move our palette and we'll put the uh, painting in the center here. All right, perfect. This is a great, fun painting to do. Have fun with it. You can do it a number of times. Uh, you just remember you're having your exciting, pure, color right out of the palette, right out of the tube, here and there. And then some nice lighter washes here and there. And you leave some white papers. Let's always leave a white paper here. In a, in a scene like this with a window and light, lots of bright light, you want to leave quite a bit of white paper. And uh, in the on the table and then on the window, the glazing of the windows. And uh, it'll look really uh, very realistic and, and beautiful and lots of light and fresh colors. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.